released back in the summer of 2023, the Ender 3 V3 SE was Creality's entry-level printer, and it still is to this day. Now, with the growing number of choices for 3D printers out there, does the Ender 3 V3 still stack up? Who should buy the Ender 3 V3 SE? So I bought the Ender 3 V3 SE to replace my original Ender 3 printer, and I noticed some improvements right away. And some of the features that I truly appreciated was the assembly of this printer. It was easy compared to my assembly of the original Ender 3. You're gonna be able to get up and going relatively quickly here. I was up and running in about 20 minutes. The assembly was very straightforward. Basically two pieces, add in there the display screen and the spool holder and you were up and running. The other thing I really liked about this is the auto level feature. This was something that was not present on the original Ender 3 printer, and it is a welcome addition on this Ender 3 V3 SE. Long gone are the days of using sheets of paper to get the distance between the print bed and the nozzle just right. This is done for you automatically. And I would say because of this, it definitely improves the print quality and the reliability of this printer. The Ender 3 V3 SE has the drive motor attached to the extruder, so it's a direct drive, and I like that just for the ease of use when it comes to loading and unloading the filament. It's a much faster, much simpler process than the original Ender 3 printer. So a minor feature, but I truly appreciate this. The other feature that I truly appreciate is just the general move towards a friendlier way of adjusting your printer. And one of those things is the belt adjustment. Now, you're not gonna do this a lot, but on the occasion where I had to adjust the belts, it was so easy on this Ender 3 V3 SE compared to the Ender 3. Finally, the price. We're gonna talk more about this later, but when it comes to some of the sale prices around this machine, for me, this was the big tipping point in deciding to purchase this printer. I was able to purchase this well under $200, and at the time, there were no other printers even close to this price point. So this was just a simple upgrade from the Ender 3. But how does the Ender 3 V3 SE compare to some of the competition? So we're going to take a look at that now. I'm going to take a look at four other bed slingers here. We're going to take a look at the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, the Elegoo Neptune 4, the Anycubic Cobra 3, and the Prusa Mini Plus. I chose these four because all four of these represent the entry-level printers for these respective companies, and all of them have received pretty good reviews online, and I'll definitely be adding in the links to those reviews in my description. So an important feature for me when it comes to 3D printers is the build volume. Now the build volume for the Ender 3 V3 SE didn't really increase or improve from the original Ender 3, but when you take a look at how it compares across the other four printers, it holds its own. The Bamboo Lab A1 Mini and the Prusa Mini Plus have smaller build volumes, and that might not be an issue for you, but for me, some of the projects that I've definitely printed have bumped up against and exceeded the print volume of the Ender 3 V3 SE. I can only imagine how much more difficult it would have been with a smaller print volume. So the Ender 3 V3 SE falling somewhere in the middle of these four printers when it comes to build volume. Now the print speed, this was something I truly appreciated moving up from the Ender 3, but when I compare it against the other machines, the 250 millimeter per second maximum speed really starts to pale in comparison to the other four that all top out at around 500 millimeters per second to even 600 millimeters per second. One of my big criticisms of the Ender 3 V3 SE is the stock build plate that comes with it. It is a powder coated spring steel build plate and it works but I prefer the PEI sheet simply because it just makes for an easier removal of prints. I print specifically with PLA and I find with the PEI sheet it is so much easier to deal with prints coming off of that build plate when I have a PEI sheet. Now, when we compare this across the other four printers, all the other four come standard with a PEI sheet. Now, when it comes to filament types, you're dealing with PLA, PETG, TPU on the Ender 3 V3 SE. I just print with PLA. So for me, this wasn't a big feature. It does hold up to the other printers that can all print PLA, PETG, and TPU. However, you're gonna notice here the Elegoo Neptune 4 and the Prusa Mini Plus definitely give you more options when it comes to the different types of filaments.
This is something I was looking at potentially upgrading to, and it is the filament runout sensor to detect when that filament, if it ever breaks or runs out, this sensor would stop the print and allow you to then change up the filament and continue the print without spoiling the print altogether. The Creality Ender 3 V3 SE does not have this sensor. And when I compare it across the other printers, the Bamboo Lab, the Elegoo, and the Anycubic printers do have them. The Prusa Mini Plus does not, but it does come up as an optional upgrade. The Creality Ender 3 V3 SE does offer it as an optional upgrade, but if you take a look, when you see what's involved in installing this filament sensor, you're going to find out that it does involve a little bit of work. The other thing that's been on my radar now is multi-filament printing. For me right now, just with the Ender 3 V3SE, it does not have a multi-filament option, and Creality does not offer a multi-filament system that is compatible with this Ender 3 V3SE. So let's take a look at the other models. The Bamboo Lab Mini and the Anycubic Cobra 3 have multi-filament systems that are compatible with those printers. The Elegoo, Neptune 4, and the Prusa Mini Plus, from what I can tell, they do not. This was not a big deal killer for me, but it's just something to consider if you're looking at potentially adding in a multi-filament option. Another feature that was not really a big thing on my radar, but something that I know is starting to creep in in a lot of the other printers, is a print bed monitoring camera. The Ender 3 does not have one, and from what I can see online, Creality does not offer a camera for the Ender 3 V3 SE as an upgrade. Now for the other printers, the Bamboo Lab, the Elegoo Neptune 4, they do have, as part of their package, a print bed monitoring camera. The Anycubic and Prusa do not. Although the Anycubic Cobra 3 does offer it as an optional upgrade. So I've always used the SD card as a way to transfer files between my computer and the printer for both of my Ender 3 printers. If you look across the board though, the new thing now is the move towards Wi-Fi. And the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini and the Anycubic Cobra 3 do offer that option. The Prusa Mini Plus does sell an optional Wi-Fi module that you can then use to upgrade your printer. But for me, I'm quite content sticking with the SD card, although I will admit it would be nice being able to send over my print files wirelessly to my printer from my PC. Okay, pricing. Now, I mentioned earlier before, this was a big factor for me in deciding to purchase the Ender 3 V3 SE. And what I've done here is I've looked at pricing in Canadian dollars, US dollars, and British pounds. It's been interesting to note that there are differences in the pricing depending on where you are. Now, at the time when I'm making this video, I also noted if there were any sale prices and I listed them down as well. So you can see here, all of these have in black the regular price and in red are the sale prices as well. Now, the sale prices are obviously going to fluctuate and change. There's nothing guaranteeing you that these sale prices are gonna last. So these are just really a snapshot at this particular moment but it does provide some insight in terms of how much these prices can fluctuate between these different printers and across these different markets. So you can see here, the pricing does vary. Now I will say for the US dollar prices, because of the tariffs that are currently occurring, pricing is changing quite a bit. However, when I look at the Canadian prices and the British pound prices, you do start to see this trend. The Creality Ender 3 V3 SE does come in at a lower regular price. However, it is interesting to look at the sale prices that we are currently seeing right now. And the price difference between say the Ender 3 and the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, the sale price there, even though the regular price is coming in at $389 Canadian, dropping it down to the 249 sale price in Canadian dollars does get pretty close to the sale price for the Creality Ender 3 V3 SE. However, it doesn't hold up when you look at the British pound pricing in the UK. So again, depending on where you are, it is definitely worth checking out the pricing and also if there are any current sales going on as well, because as you can see here, it does vary quite a bit. In review, the things that I really like about the Creality Ender 3 V3 SE, I know it has produced great prints and it's reliable and consistent. The assembly of it was really easy. And like I said before, the auto level feature makes this a very user-friendly printer. You're not tinkering around with it 
as you would if you're using the original Ender 3 printer. Now, again, the sale pricing of this, if you can find a good sales price for it, I think it really does make it an attractive option for those looking to get into 3D printing. So keep an eye out if you're looking at this printer. However, some things that people might have an issue with and some things that I had an issue with is the lack of some of the features that are now commonly found on other entry-level printers. Like I said before, the lack of a PEI build plate for the Ender 3 V3 SE is something that I would definitely recommend for those who buy this printer. And for other printers, the PEI sheet already came as a standard piece for that printer. Now, other elements like the filament sensor and wireless connectivity, those would be nice. They don't come with the Ender 3 V3 SE, but they do come with some of these other entry-level printers. Now, if you want to upgrade to a PEI plate or installing a filament sensor or maybe getting wireless connectivity if you have that option, well, that just adds to the cost. So if you're looking to upgrade, let's say from the powder-coated plate to the PEI build plate for your Ender 3 V3 SE, or maybe adding in a filament sensor, that's just added cost. And because of that, that sales pricing advantage that the Ender 3 V3 SE has is not as pronounced anymore. And that price advantage starts to narrow. So who is this printer for? A few things. If you're looking for a capable printer that can produce good quality prints, if you're looking for decent print volume and reliability in successful prints, if you're not bothered by the overall slower print speed compared to say some of the other competitors like the A1 Mini or the Neptune 4 or the Cobra 3, and if you're not interested in really upgrading to features found on those competing printers, for example, well, you don't have a need for a monitoring camera or wireless connectivity or even a filament runout sensor, then this printer could be for you. But again, I would definitely make sure you take a look across all these printers because you do have a lot of great options and be on the lookout for sales because as you saw before, pricing can vary quite a bit and when those sales hit, you might be able to get a really great deal on a very good printer. So for me, I have no regrets. I love my Ender 3 V3 SE. I got it at a great price. And yeah, I know it prints at a slower speed and it doesn't have a lot of the bells and whistles that the other printers have, but I'm able to print projects and have very successful prints. And I'm very happy with the product that I'm getting out of the Ender 3 V3 SE. All right, that's the rundown. Until next time, Take care.